Hey all, it is Paul, and uh, I'm here to uh, show you how to use the cycles to make a contrail, or a, not really a contrail, but a smoke trail in uh, the new version of Blender, which I'll show you real quick in the splash screen, is 2.76. Still early candidates are in the beta stage, but it's fun to mess around with, so I... Uh, but it's probably not stable enough just yet, but it's getting here be a regular release and uh, you have a pretty much a basic scene kind of thing set up with the big fat jet I made. If you've been watching my posts on reddit you might have seen this jet I modeled. <laughs> Did it like three hours one morning because I got up at like five in the morning and couldn't sleep and by nine o'clock I had this thing modeled out. My lazy butt still needs to texture and stuff though but for the purposes of this tutorial uh, it's just an aircraft, so you can use whatever you want, but basically I have a uh, Bezier curve, uh, and that is for the loop-de-loop, -loop, but that will be converted to a mesh, so I guess we'll get it started on that. So let's do that. But before we convert to a mesh, uh, we'll have to do some editing too. We'll get started. We'll go with the bevel setting on here and increase it. So you can see the loop-de-loop -loop gets kind of big, and change the fill to full, and resolution, I usually just give one or two ticks. And you see it's just a big loopy thing like that, which isn't so bad. It's kind of usable for what it is. Let me make it a little bit bigger, and then I'll switch into edit mode, and I do have the properties panel turned on, so that's good. So what I do is I select the point here in front of the tail, and I want to do is make the radius narrower. So you can see it tapers down, and the radius a little bit narrower there. And the radius big and fat as it flares out and gets exposed to the wind and stuff. It's like a real smoke trail. So that's how you do it. Just to be. And this is for still images. I don't think anything like this will work for uh, animations. You probably want to use the particle mode of the point density. That's what I'm going to talk about is point density. Right now you just get a loop like that. And that should be good enough, I think. So what we want is this loop. Is I think I'll make a duplicate. And I'll move that duplicate on another layer. Just in case you need it for later or something. So I'm not too picky about the layer, but if I need to get it, I got it. Restart it or something, but this should be good. And let me think a sec. I gotta convert it to a mesh. Because this stuff does not work with uh, simulated mesh. It has to have a tangible mesh. So if I go into edit mode now, you can see there is a mesh. So it's all good. And now we got to create a domain box. So I'm going to pick the loop here and the cursor to it. You know what? The cursor center is on here. So <laughs> I'll do it this way. Close enough, right? And create a cube for the domain box. I'll switch to uh, ortho view and scale that sucker up. I'm just switching views. And since this is a domain box, I can change the view type from a that to bounds. Yeah, that's for maximum drops. This is only used as a domain. And like I said, this is a still image. Uh, for animations, you'll probably want to use the particle mode for this. I'm not using the particle mode in this case. Alright, that looks about good, so I'm going to switch back to perspective mode. 
Yeah, Wilts, I gotta do here. <laughs> I got to uh, apply my rotation and scale. That's always good to do. So, just work and. So now we have a domain cube and a loop to loop cube. I switch this into a rendered view, and you can see it's solid right now. So, so what we have to do now is apply a material to this, and make a new material, go to compositing, switch out of it. And I guess this is the domain cube material, so X, yep it is. Uh, shader only want scatter. Not a shader, and we want absorption. And I also like to have a missioner just to fine tune it. So it's also a mission, but it's being applied to the volume socket. So we put in shader add. Okay, like so. So, it. 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 <laughs> and it. And this goes to volume. Right now, it doesn't look like anything too spectacular. And we also want texture and point density. Woohoo! Alright, so what we want is the object, and it is object vertices mode. And we are going to use density. So density goes in here, density goes in here. And I'm also using it to draw out a strength on the emission. You can see it goes like that. And just organize these like so. It looks a little better like that. Right now it's not exactly showing up perfect. I mean, it's there, but can't see it because the little loop to loop is visible so what I'm going to do is back to my default view and I'm going to select the loop to loop and just have it visible here but so it doesn't render out I'm going to go to the cycle settings under the object just turn everything off that keeps it visible here if I need to mess with it or just for reference purpose but when I go to rendered mode, it disappears, and you can see that the contrail itself has uh, disappeared. <laughs> Where'd it go? But let's see. should still be there. Oh, you know what? I have to select the the main thing. And the loop-de-loop -loop object is what I got a reference to, so it's that one. I believe world space mode is the one I want. Now let's turn this to rendered. And we got a loop-de-loop -loop here. Which is kind of okay, but not quite what we want. <laughs> So what we need to do now is grab this little handle here, move it over a bit, and we're going to add converter math. Switch this to multiply and move that on all of them. volume scatter the way anisotropy and isotropy works for volume scatter is it balances the light in all directions at zero away from the user at a positive value and towards the user at a negative so I'm going to go like negative 0.75 something like that 
just to keep the scattering bright. And value, I'm going to do like 0.85 here. For emission, I just like that to use that to brighten things up a bit. Just like give it a little bit of luminosity or something to glow, but this is way too high, so I gotta turn this down to like 0.015. So you now you see the smoke trail isn't so super bright, but I can bounce it up. It just brings it up. And absorption, it can be down low to you. So, you have a loop to loop, but this render setting is kind of low right now, so don't worry about it too much just yet. Less on anisotropy, yeah, something like that. All right, yeah, that brightens it up. So you want the smoke to be nice and bright on there. So let's look at some of the other settings here. Resolution, you don't really need it super high for this. And if you watch the video on the point density to kind of show what that does. And radius, I'm gonna go 0.25. My opinion would be nice if there was a way to make the radius tighter when the points get tighter together and bigger when the points get further apart so you don't get stuff blobbed out when you have a narrow section in your reference. Currently there's no way to fix it. Hopefully something gets done. Because <laughs> I know that would be useful. But This is a start. So how do we make this thing look like clouds instead of this little modeled funky mess? Okay, so what we need to do then is find a way to add noise to it, and we add noise to the vector. The vector here is actually referring to world space. So what we want to do is add a texture coordinate, or input texture coordinate. However, generated it is not the same as world space, and there is no world space uh, output node at the moment, but there is a way to get the world space. So I'll show you that. That was like the biggest hair puller for me when I was trying to do this. Because I knew I could do it. It's just... What you have to do is refer to the world space. So, how do you refer to the world space? You snap the cursor to the scene center, and you add an empty, and you leave it at the scene center. That's it. Now we go back to compositing. And I have to select the other... <laughs> Dirt. It's just faster for me to hop back here. Positing. Now I got the nodes. So what we do we refer to the empty that it is at the world center. And then we use that as the object. Where is that sucker? I should just add objects right there. Plop that. And then you see it doesn't change. And that was like the big subject of my hair pulling is I was trying to figure out why this thing kept shifting around. The generator didn't work and the object space of the cube where the actual uh, loop to loop didn't do it. It has to be the world center in this particular case using world space. So you can see that is there. So how do we add turbulence to make it look like some actual clouds? We do a color mix and you can see it shifted off because right now it's just mixing and doing whatever we add a texture and we use oh, where is it noise texture I find the color data from this works good and make this an add Right now it doesn't look anything too special. If I render this a bit, I can pause this and I'll render this a bit to show you what's going on. Yeah. One sec. I'm going to pause this and render and you'll see what's going on with some settings. Alright, I'm back again and I didn't wait for it to render all the way, but you can kind of see what's going on from what did render. 
Yeah, I'm kind of cheap, so my computer, I don't have any money to throw out that stuff right now, so. Whatever, but it still renders it. So what you got here is the, uh, the loop, but it's been offset by adding the noise. And the noise is offset because, I'll show you here, go back to compositing. What happens is noise adds the turbulence and the displacement to make it all the way over because what you're doing is taking the object coordinates in the vector space and this color add node is adding the noise texture but the noise texture happens to push the offset off by like a factor of one or something. So what you have to do is add another converter math to subtract Actually, this should be RGB. What am I doing here? So I take that out and add. Makes RGB subtract. And this RGB value is all 0.5. So if I move this all the way up, it goes right to the center where it belongs. For most purposes here. I think I could make the point radius a little smaller. So... Bump this density up here. And because it showed up a little dark against this background, I will actually make it a bit brighter with the emission power. So I'll just uh, this up to like 0 0.05. As you can see, I don't have a lot of CPU or GPU to throw at it even. It's rendering on the CPU in my case. Yeah. But it works. It just takes a long time. <laughs> So, see, it's not that I don't value my time, it's just that nobody else does, so it's kind of hard to get money for stuff. And, here we go, it's, that should be good, and I'll render this out, <laughs> but it's how you get a loop-to-loop, -loop. so you add noise to the vector for the world coordinates, and you plug that back into the particle thing. And then you just adjust it to suit your taste, and that's it. And it's a pretty good way to do a static image. Because, like, smoke simulations take forever. And sometimes you can't always train particles to go where you want them. So, this little trick does some neat stuff for still images. And I'm going to render this out and I'll let you see how this works. I'll pause again and you'll see it in all this glory. Oh, freaking A, man. I was in the middle of rendering it and a darn thing crashed. So, uh, so I was tweaking some settings just to get it in there and I, my dumb butt forgot to save it before I got to that stage. So while I'm recording this too, it doesn't help. But, uh,. <laughs> That reminds you to save a lot, and with RC versions, stupid stuff can happen, but, uh, you saw it just before I got to that, what you gotta do, so you just gotta adjust the tweak for the noise and stuff, and you can get there. Sorry about that. <laughs> Crap happens, man, so... But I'll post another render or something somewhere when I get a finished thing up. Maybe put it on Red or DeviantArt or whatever I do. Maybe Blender is. <laughs> but you got an idea what to do and uh, stuff happens. So. Oh well, at least it's something. You get the idea. Later for now, Paul.